Hi, friends. It's spooky season. So let's do some Halloween crafts. All right, that's enough of that. This week, I've got a cauldron, this little terracotta pumpkin, and these three little white pumpkins. First, let's work on this ceramic cauldron. It's just your standard first year cauldron, good for basic potions. And it's got these fat drips on it. I'm gonna paint this with acrylic paint, but some of my paint is looking a little rough. So let's mix up some fresh colors. When I first saw this cauldron and its fat, luscious drips, I immediately thought of frosting. Pink frosting with sprinkles. For a while, I did kind of second guess myself and considered doing a rainbow gradient on the frosting. Thank goodness I came to my senses. You'll see why I say thank goodness later. While I am doing something sort of cutesy, I didn't want to make it quite as color blocky and cartoony as usual. I wanted to go slightly more realistic. So I mixed up a darker and lighter pink to add some highlights and shadows. Is that how you're supposed to do this? I have no idea. I haven't taken an art class since junior high, but it's how I'm gonna try to do it. I threw some darker paint on there and then I used a slightly watered down version of the main color to blend. I did the same thing with the lighter paint. Can you even tell? Even if you can't, I really liked the effect in person. When I got to painting the actual cauldron part, I tried to be really careful to go around each drip with a teeny tiny detailing brush before filling in the rest with a larger brush. I wanted to eliminate having to do a ton of touch-ups of light pink over black and having to re-blend my shading. But I'm me, so I still had to do touch-ups. I wanted to make the actual cauldron part have a sort of metally bumpy texture on it and luckily, I never throw anything away just in case I might need it. Because I had this sponge brush hanging around and I just tore apart the end like a tiny angry little animal and tested that out. Yep, looks good. For the texture color, I mixed some metallic silver and metallic black paint. And I don't know if that silver was even necessary, but that's what I'm gonna go with. After dipping the sponge in paint, I used a piece of paper to blot most of the paint off and get a sort of even stamp. When it came time to go around the drips, I used a toothpick to sort of dot on the paint and then either my finger or sometimes a small corner of the sponge to sort of blend it in with the other textures. This was so time consuming and tedious, but I really wanted this to look good. If I had thought ahead, I would have done all of this first. Because again, I had to do touch-ups on the frosting, covering the black paint, and reblending all of the colors. The final step after all of this was the sprinkles. Something about these just makes it so much better. The last step was to varnish this. I decided to go with satin varnish on the cauldron because I didn't want it to be super shiny. And this might be kind of boneheaded on my part, but I didn't even consider the fact that the only thing creating the texture was the difference in the finish of the paint. The black base was matte and the texture was metallic. So putting a varnish over them made them all the same finish and completely eliminated any trace of the texture. I could cry right now. This was so much work. I'm so excited about it. I can't even blame the paint because it was my own dumb mistake. While that in lessons learned, I used plain gloss varnish for the frosting goo and that came out all weird looking too. I don't know why this happens sometimes. It's like the paint goes all streaky. It looks all even and pretty, but then the varnish reveals its secret identity. It doesn't usually happen with gloss varnish, so I don't know what went wrong. I'm seriously considering scrapping this whole thing and deleting all of this footage, but maybe you can learn from my mistakes someone can actually tell me what my mistakes are. So let's move on to this terracotta pumpkin. 
I got this at the Goodwill, but I legitimately have no idea what this is. It's got a lid, so I don't think it can be a candle holder, but it's open in the face, so it's not a jar. Yeah, I don't know. He's also got a kind of derpy looking face and the edges aren't really even, so I'm wondering if he was a handmade project. I literally found these for sale all over the internet, so this was definitely mass produced. Either way, I'm gonna decorate him, so let's mix up some more paint. Two seconds into painting this, I realized this isn't gonna work. This paint is thin, thin, thin. So I'm gonna have to pivot and do a white base coat. Ah, uh, that's so much better. Now let's try that again. This still took like three coats, but I can only imagine what it would have been without the base coat. You might be wondering why this pumpkin is pink. And that is because he is a strawberry. The leaves on his lid made me think of a strawberry and I just couldn't unsee it after that. I really liked the shading on the frosting on the cauldron or the varnish, so I decided I wanted to give this strawberry some depth too. I went with a gradient on the bottom. I'm not really that good at gradients yet, so this was a challenge. Also, all of these colors are mixed with the same paint, with the exception that the lighter color has some white mixed in, so I'm not sure why this red is so glossy. I don't like it. It's also really patchy, so I had to do a few coats to make it even. And then each time I tried to blend it, the darker color crept higher and higher on the pumpkin, I mean strawberry, and then I'd have to go back in with the lighter color and blend it back down a bit. This was a real stressful time in my life. But hey, it was good practice. For the leaves, I just cooked up a couple of greens and went in with about six coats of that first color. I know I could save myself the trouble by using better quality paint, but I also wanna show that you don't need to spend a ton of money on supplies if you can just put a little extra work in. I've also seen that hack where you add cornstarch to cheap paint and it helps the coverage, but I worried about how it would dry. Would it get flaky or cracky? What's cracky? I might have to test it out on something I don't care about first before a project I want to keep in display. Since this paint was so thin, the darker green was super easy to blend out. Watching this back, it looks like I'm just pretending to paint. Hopefully I can color correct this footage enough that you can even tell I'm doing anything. I painted the inside black because I thought the orangey terracotta color sort of clashed with the outside. And black might make it look slightly more Halloween-y, as Halloween-y as a strawberry jack-o'-lantern can be. There's still a few places inside that I never could reach with a brush. I mean like a bendy brush or something. And finally, he gets his strawberry seeds. I let this dry for three days, and still when I went to varnish it, the green bled and made a big ol' mess. So after cleaning the green tinted varnish off of the pink areas, I varnished each area separately by color. Some of the green paint did pull up or spread around or whatever this stupid paint is doing. So once that varnish dried, I touched it up and then varnished over it again. I'm trying to make a point about inexpensive craft materials and this paint is choosing violence. Luckily, the rest of the paint behaved itself. Here he is done, so relieved. Despite all of the problems, in the end, the paint looks normal and you can't tell anything wonky happened. I'm not sure you can tell he's a strawberry, but I'll take it. And that's all for this week. Wait, wasn't there a third item in the intro? You caught me. With all the issues I had, I ran out of time for this video. So this is gonna be part one. I did already finish the other three pumpkins, so stay tuned for part two next week. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.